بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از عبد الرحمن اینڈ یو آر واچنگ اینیملز پروڈکشن پریکٹسز ان ٹو ڈے ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دی مینجمنٹ آف دی کاؤ ایٹ ڈفرینٹ فزیولوجیکل اسٹیجز دوز فزیولوجیکل اسٹیجز مے بی اسٹارٹنگ جسٹ آفٹر دی پارچوریشن ڈرائی اینیمل کاونگ آفٹر برتھ آل دی پریکٹسز انوالونگ We will be discussing in detail all these stages in the later of the video. So keep watching animals production practices. First of all, what are the different managemental stages of the animal during the whole life? First of all, the management of the cow, then the weaning of the cow. are the calf management weaning is the restriction of the animal uh, milk or the abandon of the milk sucking next is the stock young stock management heifer the female young animal is called heifer the management of the pregnant cow how to do this dry cow how they are managed and then care of the cow at calving near the period of parturition or calving care of cow after calving and next is the milking herd dry cow buffalo management and next at the end the very important the most important that is bull management which is very important for the breeding of the animals so all these are the practices which are going we are going to discuss in detail today in this video the very first one care of the newborn calf at birth when the calf is born we must very firstly have to check whether the calf is breathing or not if the calf is breathing then it's good good uh, good for us and if it's not breathing we have to artificially provide breathing to stimulate the breathing in the animal we have to pressurize the body at a specific site to stimulate the breathing in the animal next is the bleeding uh, cleaning what to clean is the natural orifices and the necessary during winter this is very important the cleaning of the animals this is this is we are talking about the practices involved just at birth next is the disinfection of the navel cord disinfectant that may be used is the tincture of iodine and we remember we have to carefully cut the navel cord just 1 to 1.5 inches from the body and after cutting of the navel cord apply antiseptic that antiseptic may be st- any standard available antiseptic may be provided at the cut site of the navel cord remember this distance 1 to 1.5 inches from the body always care while per- doing this practice as this is uh, very important and the bleeding may occur so the care of the animal or the welfare of the animal should be kept in mind weighing and marking <coughs> the very next practice is the weighing of the newborn calf and the marking of the animal to recognize in the herd the marking may be done with the tattooing of the animal ear tagging of the animal or the uh, any symbol may be uh, provided around the neck of the newborn calf to be recognized next is the fleeding of the claustrum within 1 hour we have to milk the dam and that milk we have to feed that milk is called as claustrum and we have to provide it to the newborn calf to, uh, so that now they uh, look at the uh, importance of the claustrum the claustrum is very very energy energy for uh, having uh, drink and the proteins fats contents are abundant in this claustrum which is very 
healthy for the newborn calf and then we have to decide whether we have to provide the <coughs> whole milk to the newborn calf or skimmed milk limited milk or milk replacer the very common practice we are uh, doing in the field is providing limited milk to the newborn calf next is the dehorning of the animal the dehorning of the animal may be done in two ways which we are going to discuss in the later slides the horning of the animal should be done within 3 to 10 days of the age of the newborn calf and then is the calf feeding schedule the calf feeding schedule will be discussed in detail in the later slides colostrum it is the normal what is colostrum it is the normal physiological secretions of the mammary glands just after the remember this is just after the parturition or the calving of we, the, that milk is called colostrum. It is the normal physiological secretions of the mammary glands of class mammalian just after parturition to fourth day of milking. Class mammalian, what, why I uh, mentioned this class mammalian? Those animals which allow their kids to be suck, to suck the anim, uh, to suck them and uh, uh, to allow them to for milking just after parturition to fourth day of the milking this is the the secretion or the milk is called colostrum the milk after the parturition up to the fourth day is called as colostrum what are the benefits of providing colostrum to the newborn calves it provide it boost the immunity of the animal as i mentioned earlier it is a rich source of energy having a lot of abundance amount of fat protein minerals vitamins it is very nutritious nutritious drink that is very much beneficial for the newborn calf it also removes meconium what is meconium meconium is the very dark dark grayish pieces just after the birth of the newborn calves so the colostrum providing to the, the colostrum providing practice to calves is very essential to immune to boost the immunity to provide energy to provide fat proteins minerals or vitamins uh, that also lead to the immunity of the animal and then very important the, it removes the meconium weaning and benefits if we are uh, have, if we are doing the dairy practice at the commercial level the weaning practice is very common which may be done at just after the birth of the calf the weaning is very important if we are going to have the full dairy dairy uh, animal production as what is weaning take away of the dam from dam on the first day in the weaning we what we do the in the weaning what we do what we do is the the taking away of the taking away of the dam the taking away of the calf from the dam it is the cessation of the milk feeding what are the benefits of the weaning easy management the calves are can be managed easily and then <coughs> according to the requirements of the calves we may provide the milk to them as if we are not doing the weaning the calf may suck all the milk of the animal so according to the requirement according to the standards we may follow if we are going to provide the milk after the weaning physically and then is the under or overfeeding may be avoided underfeeding of the calves or the overfeeding of the calves may be avoided and the very important the clean milk can be provided to the calves actual milk production of the animal of the dam after the calving may be recorded or may be predicted for the other breeding seasons the very important no teeth wound no any physical injury occur in the weaning practice dehorning what is dehorning process of removing or preventing the growth of the horns 
<coughs> the dehorning is very important to provide a look to the animal to make them beautiful and to protect the animals from the injuries or to any other physical traumas why we do this uh, dehorning improve the appearance of the animals reduce the injuries the physical injuries of the animals increase the feeder space of the uh, for the animals to feed more and the uh, very important improve the value the beautiful the beautification the up looking and the injury free animal will be valued more than the damaged animals the dehorning may be done in two ways the non invasive and the invasive in non invasive what we do the the chemical is provided chemical is pasted on the horns the and the horns are simply pushed out from the animal body and in the invasive the instruments are used to cut the horns the from the animals non invasive bloodless this practice is bloodless young animals can be dehorned easily and then what we do and how we do it this is a non invasive technique of dehorning we provide chemical paste disadvantages of the dehorning set the animal back to the stress the animal may go into stress as we are going to uh, restrain the animal dehorning providing pain to the animal providing uh, restraining uh, practices and then the cost and labor as well as equipment death due to bleeding if we uh, if the dehorning is not done properly if the dehorning is not done properly the dehorning may lead to the uh, death of the animal as the excessive bleeding may occur then this disease disease spreading may occur scar may uh, permanently scar may occur if not properly done breed id <coughs> this is the coughing a cough, feeding calf schedule week of, uh, of age this schedule is made according to the age of the animals in the weeks first of all the what we have to provide up to the fourth to seventh day of the animal of the young calf is the legume hay or the calf starter or the other colostrum first this schedule is starting from the fourth day first three days we have to provide only colostrum okay and then fourth day to seventh day provide 10% of the body weight of the calf the legume hay or the calf starter and this may be provided at libitum may be provided at any time or should be kept in the branches all the time that may be eaten at any time by the calf and then the second to eighth day eighth week of the calf 10% of the body weight the legume hay or the calf starter may be provided at at libitum ninth week of the age of the calf 2 per kg at libitum 2 kg more legume hay or the calf starter should be provided plus the 10% of the body weight and then at the 10th week provide 4 kg more plus 10% body weight legume hay calf starter the next <coughs> is the management of the dry or the pregnant animals pregnancy no need special care during initial stages but feeding and housing may continue of heifers for first cover <coughs> lactating animals do not don't need extra feeding allowance during the earlier 1 to 2 kg of the concentrate per head allowance should be given during last 3 months the, remember this is the extra according to the requirements or the body weight we have to provide it uh, in the regular but in the last 3 months of the pregnancy we have to provide 1 to 2 kg more concentrate per animal carefully watched to avoid abortion due to unnecessary exercise fight or other physical trauma this is the 
practices involving during the pregnancy of the animals we have to carefully wash the animals so that they may uh, not occur un under the unnecessary exercises or the fight of the animals with the other animals or the physical trauma should not occur in the pregnancy stage and during the dry period we have to provide selected feeds feeds according to the standards according to the requirements plus as i mentioned earlier 1 to 2 kg extra allowance at libitum should be provided the feed should be provided at at libitum then the exercise of the animals not to do not to suffer the animal under the high exercises or high uh, or stressful exercises or practices should not be suffered and then handle carefully animals and the animals should not be chased by the dogs or other uh, forest animals like the rough dogs or the other animals extra ration to meet the maintenance grow extra ration should be provided to the animals so that the growth during the pregnancy should be occur easily and according to the requirements of the heifer the ration should be provided Pro properly follow the vaccination schedule the vaccination schedule is a uh, will be uh, is very important to be followed to provide the Im animals immunity against different diseases <coughs> and next is shift the cows or the animals to dry cow shed and the shed should be air and clean well bedded care of cow at calving at calving very first cover need more attention shift the cow just after calving shift the cow to calving pens before calving sorry before calving we have to shift the cow to calving pens to avoid the fighting of the animals overcrowding of the animals which can cause accidents or the fight with other animals or the injuries may occur no disturbance to the pregnant animals environment of the calving box should be the box or the pen environment where we are going to keep the calving animals the environment of that pen should be the pen should be clean well ventilated the air passage should be very flow uh, continuous and then the most important the bedding material should be clean and neat and clean and should be provided softly signs of parturition <coughs> Note the date of the parturition from the breeding periods. However, the pregnancy period or the parturition day may be predicted according to these days. As in case of buffalo, the pregnancy may be occur after the three ten days, three hundred and ten days of of the conceiving. In case of cows, two hundred and eighty days, and in case of sheep or goat. The 150 days are going to be uh, are going to be occur during the calving stage uh, during the gestation period. Then is the dropping of the ligaments around, uh, around the tail, head, or pit formation two to three days before the calving. <coughs> this is a very important sign, a very common sign, as we can see the dropping of the ligaments around the tail may be seen before two to three days of calving this is the sign of parturition or calving and then the feeling of this well feeling or swelling of the udder may occur and the rise in the body temperature may also a sign of parturition that the parturition or the calving is very near next sign is restlessness in the animals appearance of the water bag before calving <coughs> and in in the parturition or the calving what should be the position of the calf the four feet of the newborn calves of the calves which is uh, being uh, parturated which is being parturation parturating the four feet should appear first and then the head of the calf resting on the front feet the four feet and then the head of the animal is 
resting on the those four feeds which are appearing first and then is the <coughs> practice occur which is contraction and relaxation of the muscles the calf is pushed out abnormal position what could be the more abnormal position the head may come first or appear or the other organ of the animal or uh, calf may appear first in case of that we must need a veterinary help so that the parturition may be done easily however in case of abnormal position an extra 4 to 6 hours may be consumed for parturition this is the appearance of water bag <coughs> before 2 to 3 days of the parturition and this is the normal position normal position of the calf coming out of the animal look at this the four both four feet and the head of the animal are coming along this pathway out of the body the four feet will appear first from this side and this will be the sign of the parturition this is the appearance of the four feet within the pregnant animals care of cow after calving <coughs> after calving the very important practice the very first practice that is the cleaning of the animal washing the hind legs including genitalia with clean water the next is the placenta expulsion of the placenta if the placenta is not expelled within 24 hours veterinary help should be called on the placenta should be expelled within 24 hours next is the washing washing of the legs or the hind legs or genitalia with the, of, with the clean water or the warm water slightly warm water can be used provide energy source through the animal <coughs> The energy source may be molasses or gold, gold mixed in the and uh, water along with wheat bran. Milking of the animal should be done within twenty within one hour after the pasturation, and there there should be no wait for the expulsion of the placenta from the animal after the birth. So the milking should be done within one hour. After parturition, digestive upsets or the milk fever, mastitis, these are the common uh, common problems within the dairy animals as the animal has suffered a lot of pain and practices so the animal or the dairy animal may occur under the milk fever, mastitis or the digestive upsets. So these are very common problems, don't worry on these <coughs> upsets. So this that's all about 